In this clip, I'm going to talk about some of the options available under the gap fill question in Moodle. So there's a total of five questions here and they show variations of how gap fill might be used and when it's appropriate. So this question is what I call the standard gap fill question. And it's asking me to uh, do some accounting work. So it's saying here gross profit is equal to something, net profit is equal to something. So I won't do the entire question, I'll just demonstrate some of it. So you might say gross, gross profit is equal to your sales minus your cost of sales. And similarly for the remaining uh, components in the question. The difficulty here is that this person filling in the results or the answers might misspell something. So that's the danger in this particular question type of variations in spellings or misspellings, etc. So question two is the exact same type of type of a que exact same question, except I'm using an another variation of gap fill. This is called the drag and drop uh, variation. So what you notice in the drag and drop is that with the exact same five um, questions to answer: gross profit, net profit, working capital. What are they made up of? And then down at the bottom of the question, just below the question, or it can be above the question, you can position the various uh, options that may be appropriate for filling in the gaps. And in this case here, you notice that there's, because there's uh, five uh, components, there's going to be 10 gaps in this particular question. There's two in each one. But I have about 12 or 14 uh, possible answers. So in this drag and drop version of the question, you can, if you wish, include distractors. So you can include as many distractors as you like. And therefore, even though the answers are looking at you, you might know which ones are the most suitable. So I'm looking for, again, taking the gross profit. If I say it's cost of sales, or sales rather. So there I have sales. So I can drag and drop sales into the first slot. And cost of sales is over here then for the second slot. So I can either drop it in there or if I think I know it and I trust my spelling, I can actually type it in and it behaves the same way. So that's the approach you may adopt. And then net profit is probably equal to gross profit minus some expenses. So can we see whatever else is here? Minus expenses, the last option. So just fill in those two. And then for the remaining ones, I might just deliberately put in um, some wrong answers. So here for working capital, I'm going to say it's equal to equity capital minus ordinary share capital. So that's definitely wrong. So that's two variations of um, for the same exercise. One where we have for you enter in the answers, you type them in. And secondly, where you uh, put them in via uh, the drag and drop approach. The third question I'm going to show is similar idea, except this time I want to do some calculations. So it says a business buys a machine for 250,000. It has a useful, useful life of five years and it's scrap value of 50,000. So therefore they were working with 250,000 minus 50,000. And if it's straight line depreciation, it's going to be 40,000 per year. So two questions here. First of all, ans asks uh, about the depreciation charge for year one. And secondly, for depreciation charge for year five. And in both cases, they're 40,000. But the bit that you may need to be aware of is the student might enter it as straight 40,000 without any punctuation or any currency formatting, or might alternatively enter it as 40, comma, 000, dot, 00. So both of those answers are potentially correct. So in a later clip, the plan is to demonstrate how you can accommodate two or three variations of the same same answer. And this is a particularly appropriate where you have, um, say, money amounts or decimal points in an answer, or where you have any possible two correct variations of the answer. So that will become important later on. Question four, is another accounting oriented question. And in this case, just to illustrate the scope of the question of the gap bill, what I'm doing here is I'm doing a budget. What I have is um, a company that makes two forms of masks, two types of protective masks, the basic and the luxury. 
And the sales of the basic are expected to be 40,000 at 20 euros a pop, and the sales of the luxury are expected to be 50,000 at 30 euros a pop. And what I need to do here is enter in the, um, the six slots that are available, the expected sales value, volume, and this here is an image. The top half of the um, question where the question is, it's an image I've, I've created using snipping tool. So the original question where it mentions question and the, uh, the details here and the, the two products are, were all originally written in an Excel spreadsheet. And I just simply took a snip image of the spreadsheet or a segment of the spreadsheet and pasted it in directly into Moodle. Now the difficulty here is I can't really resize it. So that's maybe one of the flaws in this approach. But then down the bottom, I have the, um, the values I need to enter. So it's 40,000 for the quantity. 40,000 units. Selling price is 20. So again, I might put it in as two zero, or I might put in the second time as 30 point note note, or I might put in currency formatting. And then the sales value, I have to get my calculator out and do some calculations. So hopefully it's around 800,000 euro. So again, I might put it in as 800 comma zero zero zero, um, and so on. So there are the possible variations. Of that the other bit that's worth mentioning here is the area where my answer is appearing down the bottom here in the Moodle gap fill question you can create a table and the table ensures that the that the various headings are nice and neatly lined up so for under basic the three text boxes below it are appearing directly underneath each other and same for luxury and that's because I've used a um, a table so you can build a table or create a little table like you would in Microsoft Word. And in this case, it has four rows because there's the heading row and then the three, the three data rows. And there's three columns, one for the labels and then the other two are for the numbers. So that's using a table. So it's a, so it's a snip or an image plus a table to um, help present that question and help you fill it in. And the fourth question, the next question, sorry, the final question is one that's completely different. It's got nothing to do with accounting. It's a biology type of question. And the reason I'm including this question is that I might have a list of several questions that all fall under a similar category. And what I could do is add in each of them as a separate question. So if the first one might be is, what is the molecule that stores genetic information? And the answer for that might be DNA. I think DNA is one of the answers here. And I could write that as a separate question, okay, just part A on its own, and have DNA and a number of other values as possible distractors. Or I could ask the user to type in the value, whatever the value might be, DNA in this case. So I have a number of a set of, of questions here, A, B, C, D, E, down as far as M. And I have all the answers here, plus several distractors as well. So as I said, you could create those as 12, 13 separate questions and have their own individual answers and distractors. But if you're in a hurry and you'd like to create the same questions, um, but you haven't got the time to create them as individual questions, what you can do is take them all and say, in this case, there were, I wrote the initial questions in a notepad file plus the answers and copy them directly into my Moodle uh, quiz page, my, my gap fill question page, paste them in and I had my brackets and everything um, ready to for my gaps. So that's a much faster way of uh, creating several questions in one rather than creating several individual questions. And if your students are revising for exams or something, it probably has the same effect. It probably has the same impact. Obviously, there's there's far more distractors to look at and that might slow you down a bit, but that's the benefit. The only flaw in this kind of a question where I have multiple questions in the one question is that when Moodle marks those, we'll say there's 12 of them, okay? Moodle will allocate the exact same amount of marks to question A, B, C, D, all the way down as far as question M. So if there were if there were big differences in, in the, the marks that should go for each one, that then justifies creating them as separate questions. So that's a quick look at some of the key, the different ways that you can present gap fill questions and how you can use them uh, very quickly to uh, create a, a reasonable bank of questions that you can work from. So the next clip will hopefully explain
how to create some of those questions.